In this video, I'm going to show you the entire blackout process, a sped up time lapse of using BSP brushes to black in this building. This is the reference photo that I used, and here's the result. And I'm going to show you the sped up version of the entire process and talk throughout to give you a few tips and things that I kept in mind as I was creating it. So you can expect to pick up a few tips, techniques, and see the entire process of how this came together. The first and most important thing is to establish the correct dimension and the scale of the building. So I have a human reference scale, a mannequin, inserted into the map, and it will help me judge proportion. And then I picked a section, a part from the photo reference, where I will begin the blackout from. And I chose this part right here, the first floor, with the door and the window. And it was important to get this part right. So that means I had to get the correct height for the floor, which was about 350 in height. And then I had to get the correct window size and the correct door size. And it had to be very close to what it was in the reference. And having this mannequin in front helped me to establish that. So this first part, getting the right size, the beginning, was very important. Because from here on out, everything will be duplicated and used for the rest of the blackout. So if I got this wrong, then the rest of the proportion, the rest of the scale, would be wrong too. So once I knew I had the first floor, this first section blocked in and it was correct in terms of proportion, scale, and dimensions, then I began to expand to the second floor using the same units, the same values that I established in the first floor. And from this point on, I had my base values, base dimensions locked in. And from this point on, I could freely duplicate and expand for the rest of the building. So once you've established the base dimensions to use, the rest of the process is very fast and very straightforward. And it becomes more about trying to mimic the photo reference as close as you can and as accurate as you can. Another thing you'll notice is once I have one part of the building blocked in, I duplicate those brushes and move them around the building. So instead of reinserting a new brush and trying to resize it, I just use already created brushes, especially for the windows and doors. And I just maintain those dimensions for the rest of the blackout. I also have the photo reference in view at all times. So as I'm blocking this in, on my second monitor, I have the photo reference that I can see and I'm always looking over to see how close I'm getting with the BSP blackout. And once I reach the back, here it becomes more about duplicating what I did in the front of the building. Because I don't have reference all around 360 to know what's going on in the back. I only have one photo reference of the front. So for the back, I had to improvise and kind of use what I did in the front and change it a bit while maintaining the same dimensions and a similar architecture. So for the back, it was more about duplicating and maintaining similar feel, similar geometry. And once I'm done with the back, the entire structure of the building is complete. And at this point, it becomes about adding the architecture detail, the windows, the doors, things at the top, and subtract in the sections for the balconies at the top. Then once I have that done, the first floor, the second floor, and the architecture at the top, and the framework of the building is complete, I begin to expand down. Because as you can see in the reference, the building has a lower floor that goes into the ground. And the reason I didn't start from the very bottom floor is due to how irregular the bottom floor is. It was very hard to establish the height of that base floor. And it was much easier to start where I did and expand down than trying to figure out the different size and the angle of the bottom floor and then go up. So always start with the path of least resistance. Start with the easiest section first where you can get the most accurate dimension, scale and proportion. Get that right and then expand from there. And for the ground, I created a landscape and I'm trying to establish the same terrain as I see in the reference. So I'm just going around the building, raising and lowering the terrain, 
trying to get that angle that I see in the reference and using the sculpt tool, the smooth tool and the flatten tool to get something similar. Also in the back, I'm doing some quick final adjustments with the BSP brushes, such as adding the windows, doors, and including a platform. And here we are. The BSP blackout of this building and the terrain around it is complete. This is now a good starting point to begin creating the static meshes. What I would do is use this building as a template to create modular meshes. I would export this entire building as an FBX file import it into 3D modeling software and use it as a template to create the modular static meshes. And then I would import them back in and begin replacing all the BSP brushes with the modular static meshes. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe so you don't miss any more tutorials. And if you want to learn Unreal Engine 4 as an absolute beginner without wasting your time trying to look for this information yourself, Get Unreal Engine 4 Fundamentals Volume 1, the essential beginner's guide to Unreal Engine 4 course, where you will finally learn Unreal Engine 4 in just 7 hours. You'll find the link in the description below, or if you're on the website, right above you go to Full Courses and click on UE4 Fundamentals Volume 1. And I will see you in the next video.